Hello and welcome to The Insider, a show designed to clue you into the biggest news, events and announcements inside the video games industry, discussing with you some things you may know, some things you may not, and the glue that holds it all together is a little bit of my own opinion. My name is Paul James, thank you very much for watching, and let's kick off the episode. Games play best on Xbox One. So in the last 24 to 36 hours, depending on when this actually goes live, uh, Microsoft will have declared and outlined some of its plans for Gamescom 2018. I know, we've only just had the dust settle on E3 and already the conversation has now shifted to Gamescom. But the, the event's not that far away. Begins August 21st, continues that entire week. Microsoft has a press conference, or at least a presence, at that show this year and they started to talk about some of the things that'll be present. They spoke about console accessories. They spoke about 25 plus games. Both of these things we'll talk about soon. And initially, <laughs> there was a little mistake. They spoke about console releases. And for that you know, half hour to an hour, people on the internet are starting to look around and go, oh my God, the next Xbox, they, they're gonna talk about it. They're gonna show it. They're gonna outline more about it. And then you know, it quickly became clear that it was a mistake and Microsoft actually corrected that wording and they're talking about console bundles. Uh, but it has prompted the whole conversation. Xbox is going to be at Gamescom 2018 and I'm gonna to talk to you in this episode of The Insider a little bit more about what they're going to be doing there, what you should expect, what you should hope for and what we can maybe rule out. Hey, hey. Why did you come here with me? What did JD tell you? This is a wild game of survival. So let's first start by talking about the games. That is, after all, what we're all here for. Now, Xbox has outlined some of their plans for what they're going to be doing there, but then we can extrapolate a little bit. It seems, at least at this early stage, that Microsoft has the Gamescom platform in terms of a press conference format to its own. Sony doesn't, as of yet, have anything planned. They may do Paris Games Week or something like that like they've done in the past, which gives Microsoft a clean slate to firstly promote a lot of third parties and help attach their name to those games. And that might in turn shift some more Xbox Ones but also they can focus and double down on those exclusive games that we now know about. We've spoken in past episodes about how there's not many Xbox exclusives and technically there still isn't because of that whole Xbox and PC kind of crossplay sort of thing that they're going uh, and they're doing there. But still, there's plenty of franchises that we attach to the Microsoft name. Those are Halo, those are Gears, and we actually now know that there's games from those IP on the way in the form of Halo Infinite, Gears of War 5, Gears Tactics, actually sorry I take that back, Gears 5, we've now dropped the Of War part from the official name, Gears 5, Gears Tactics, Gears Pop, we might learn a bit more about these games. There's also Crackdown 3 that now has a February 22nd release date and Microsoft seems to be adamant about the fact that it will not slip from that date any further. So we need to see some gameplay for that. There's Ori and the World of the Wisps. There's Forza Horizon 4. There's lots of games now that we can see on the horizon from Xbox that they can actually talk about, that they can show, that they can tell us about. They can kind of talk about their plans and their ambitions and, and what they want to achieve with these games. And that is fantastic for anyone who has an Xbox One. We can then add to it the fact that at E3, they announced five new studios were joining the family. Some we assumed in the form of uh, the team responsible for State of Decay and it was only a matter of time before uh, we got the team playground uh, responsible for Forza Horizon coming across but then we add to that the Heavenly Sword guys. Um, like there's, there's a whole bunch of new players in this Xbox fold and while some of those games are probably still a little ways away, maybe we can start to learn a little bit about what the goal is, what they're designing. In the case of the Heavenly Sword team, Ninja Theory, they reside in Europe, so maybe it's a great opportunity to get them out and get them to talk a little bit. There's a great platform here, there's 25 plus games that they intend to talk about and show. I can't wait to see what they've got in store, and maybe they'll announce some new ones for good measure. Here's hoping.
One of the more interesting aspects of this reveal, this announcement, especially after the whole console thing was clarified, was the accessories component. And I'm really interested in this because the more we think about games platforms these days, be it PlayStation or Nintendo or Microsoft's platforms, there's not that many peripherals or accessories or attachments that the console manufacturers themselves really lean upon. Obviously with PlayStation we've got VR, so there's components that go with that. Nintendo's got a few little gimmicks that they've released over the journey. Microsoft certainly hasn't. And there's really only two things they might want to lean on. The first of those is the recently revealed, released, discussed adaptive controller. One that is designed for those with special needs or just a disability or some sort of impairment that stops them from playing the game the way so many other people do. It's a fantastic initiative that Microsoft's getting down to here. And it's great that they are opening up their console to so many more people. And what I would love, even as someone who's not going to benefit from using this controller, what I would love for Microsoft to do is show us what it does, how it works, show us some of the features. This is something they need to shove in the faces of people because those who've not been able to access a games controller for so long have likely given up because we've seen the same format, the same approach by all three console manufacturers for decades now. And we've not seen much variation. We've not seen anything that really gives people an opportunity to play the game in a different way. And now that's here, and they may not be aware of that yet. So take advantage of the platform, show everyone, including myself, because I'm interested, what this thing does, how it works, and why it will work for you dependent on your certain condition or handicap or whatever. The next thing, of course, I think is the Xbox's Elite controller. There's been a lot of buzz about this controller. It's fantastic. People love it. People love the you know, pulling apart, you pulling it apart and attaching little features and doing this and that. And it's so opposable. It's so, I, I've not got one myself, but I've picked one up and I've tried it and it, look, it looks and plays and feels fantastic. And I feel like there needs to be a price drop for it. Cause at the moment, the reason I don't have it is because it's in Australia, it's close to $200. I can't justify that for a controller that just looks and feels a bit better. Given how already awesome the Xbox one controller is. If they can lower that price threshold, maybe with a new version of the controller that maybe doesn't quite have the same number of bells and whistles, then you've suddenly got my interest and maybe several others. It's a great controller and they need to make it more accessible for the rest of us. Not because of the same reasons we're talking about the adaptive controller, but because of these reasons. Next up, we're talking console bundles, not consoles, not Project Scarlet, not like all of us had hoped and dreamed and thought of. We're talking about console bundles. So we're talking about the Xbox One, the Xbox One X, the Xbox One S. Microsoft have games they can lean upon here. They have PUBG exclusive and sure, it's no Fortnite. And we can see that PlayStation is doing bundles with Fortnite, kind of, weirdly, it's a digital game. We're seeing those sorts of bundles going on, on the PlayStation side and they do a lot of them. It's time for Microsoft to step up its game in this space. They've got PUBG they could lean upon. They've got Forza Horizon 4 they could lean upon. They could do a variation. They could do the Xbox uh, One X in a white color. Or God knows how many other colors because we've seen it with what they've done with the controllers. They've got opportunities here to create some cool bundles that catch people's eye, that leverage an IP. Maybe it's a third party IP. There's some big third parties coming out this year. Fallout 76 could be one. Leverage those IP, make them linked with the Xbox One platform in name. People think Fallout 76, they think of Xbox. You get sales, you get more sales for the, uh, the games developer and publisher, and you can help foster relationships going forward. It's a very simple thing, but Microsoft, you need to get some bundles going. It gets people in the door. Man, these bad guys just won't quit. They got math, math science, and math a master plan. Down three. 
And finally, we'll take a moment to talk about Project Scarlet. Scarlet is the next generation of Xbox. There have been more forthcoming with this information than PlayStation have so far, and a successor to the Switch is quite some, quite some time away. There's a lot of theories out there about what the next console generation is going to look like. Again, Microsoft have been the most forthcoming so far, but they've still not really said anything about what this console is. And whilst I don't expect to see anything there, I'd expect for Phil Spencer, or whoever it is that represents Microsoft on the day, to come out, reiterate that it is a thing, it is coming, and maybe, similarly to what they did to the Xbox One X, talk a little bit about what this console can do. What we saw when they spoke about the Xbox One X was a company talking about specs and talking about it being the most powerful console in the world, and that's certainly going to be the case at least until PlayStation comes out and shows their hand, and maybe it'll remain the case even in spite of that. But I wouldn't rule out the possibility that we see some specs spoken about, or we talk about something that Microsoft has been discussing themselves for a little while here, and I'm talking about consoles that are adaptable, that you can pull apart and you can slap new pieces in. We're talking like iPhones, we're talking about a, a light version of what PC gamers are doing where we've got a console where maybe the processor can be yanked out or we can put a new graphics card in or we could do any of these sort of things. And of course, we're not going to have those available to us day one because it's going to be a brand new sparkly system. But they might talk about this, this general concept, this general philosophy that underpins the console, what it does, how it's going to work, what sort of games we're going to play. It'll be Halo Infinite, I'm sure. But I would love to see this idea of a truly adaptable, moddable console and that you can just take these official products out, you know, they're you know, things Microsoft are producing. But instead of getting a mid-system, mid-console generation upgrade, we get a new piece slapped in. And it costs far less than what it does before. But Microsoft's gonna sell enough of these things to still make the same amount of money. I wanna see a little bit of next-gen Xbox talk. Nothing super deep, I don't have any expectations for that. There's no real reason to expect that. We've seen shorter and shorter turnarounds from announcement to release in the last, well, in this last console generation and even beforehand as well. And I don't expect that to get any wider going forward. I'm sure that gap is gonna get smaller and smaller, but they might start teasing some philosophies. I'm really looking forward to that prospect. So that concludes another episode of The Insider. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. All those buttons are down below here, and those will get you access to episodes of Patch, The Insider, The Video Games Club, The Late Game Review, Player 2 Plays, and a whole lot more. There's some awesome content there, so please make sure to go and check it out. For written content, make sure to visit the website, player2.net.au, where you'll find reviews, previews, opinion pieces, news, features, the Player 2 Writer's Draft, and heaps more, all contributed by some of the best talent in Australia. There's some awesome people writing for Player 2, so please check their stuff out. We're also on Patreon, patreon.com slash player2au, and consider throwing in a few dollars there. At the lower tiers, you'll get early, ac early access to episodes such as this, such as Patched, and many more. At the top tiers, you can join us in the monthly Player 2 podcast, and you'll get an exclusive episode of either this or Patched. So please consider checking it out. You're helping the Player 2 dream to grow. We would love your support. For rolling updates, you can find me at PaulJamesP2 on Twitter, the website at Player2AU on Twitter, and until next time, watch this Xbox space really closely because they're doing some interesting things. I'll see you next time.